Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. Today we're gonna to be talking about work to rest ratios for different energy systems. So we're gonna go through energy system one by one, and then we're gonna talk about the time of work intervals that are optimal for each energy system and the work to rest ratios that we would use based on those energy systems. If you stick around towards the end, we'll go through examples of how much rest we should prescribe, for example, for a sprint or for an endurance-based interval. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so first we have the phosphagen system. If you want more information about the phosphagen system, check out this video here. But when we're thinking about the phosphagen system, this is really less than 10 seconds of work. So if we're thinking about something like an eight second sprint or a 10 second sprint, we're gonna primarily use the, the phosphagen system, also called the ATP PC cycle. That's what we're gonna be using for energy. What that means is that the, the molecule phosphocreatine and adenosine triphosphate in our muscle is going to be supplying the muscles with most of the energy if we're only running for 10 seconds. If we go a little bit longer, so say we're sprinting for 30 seconds, and that might be like a 200 meter sprint, or you know, a play as a midfielder, you know, making a couple, couple moves on the ball, moving it down the field, and then making a pass, that 30 second interval of work is gonna primarily be using fast glycolysis. We also call that anaerobic glycolysis, and that's the energy system that results in lactate. All right, so if we go a little bit longer here in that one to three minute range, so this might be like a, you know, a half mile run or something like that, in, with that, we're gonna be using a combination of fast glycolysis and oxidative energy systems. So this is kind of that mixed area where we're gonna be producing some lactate. This is definitely gonna be above the lactate threshold in terms of the, the work there, but there's also gonna be some oxidative contribution there. And then our last, our longest energy system is efforts that are longer than three minutes. So to sustain an effort longer than three minutes, we have to be in an oxidative zone, that way we're not accumulating too much fatigue and, and getting too tired. So basically an oxidative uh, energy system is something that's sustainable, like steady state running, like going out and running a mile or a 5K or something like that. It, it again can be intervals, but they would be those longer intervals where you're kind of going you know, a little bit more intense and a little bit less intense, maybe like a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio, which we'll talk about later. But let's go back to the phosphagen system and then go through an example of what this looks like. All right, so if we're thinking about the phosphagen system, this might be something like box jumps, broad jumps, sprinting, uh, anything that's about 10 seconds or less and is really high intensity. So if we're thinking about that, uh, let's use the example of an eight second sprint. So let's just say we are doing um, you know, 60 yard sprints with our athletes and the athlete on average is taking about eight seconds. So we wanna tell these high schoolers, how much should we rest? Should we be resting you know, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes? How do we decide that? Well, based on the NSCA's guidelines here, we wanna use a one to 12 to one to 20 work to rest ratio for sprints lasting in that five to 10 second range. So to calculate that guys, we're gonna think eight seconds times 12 at the minimum is gonna be 90, 96 seconds of rest. And at the maximum, we're gonna use that eight seconds times 20, and that's gonna get us 160 seconds of rest. So if we were asked, what's the optimal rest ratio for an eight second sprint? Is it gonna be two minutes, three minutes, or four minutes? Well, we would say two minutes, because that's between that 96 and that 160 seconds of rest. So in that case, we're gonna say the energy system's phosphagen system, work to rest ratio is one to 12 to one to 20, and the optimal time is around a minute and a half to a two and a half minutes. All right, when we think about fast glycolysis, again, these are a little bit longer efforts. We're using that anaerobic system, fast glycolysis. So this might be something like a 30 second sprint. And we'll just say, for example, that's a 200 meter sprint on the track. So if that's the case, and we're doing, for example, working with our athletes to do 200 meter repeats. So they're running 200 meters and maybe they're walking for 200 meters or they're just resting at the line and then going another 200 meters. And say they're doing eight of them in our workout. How much rest are we gonna to prescribe to them? Well, if they're taking on average 30 seconds and we are gonna look here for the work to rest ratio guidelines of one to three to one to five, that means we're gonna to need to multiply that work rate of 30 seconds by three and say that there's a minimum of 90 seconds of rest at the maximum, we're gonna do that 30 seconds times five, and we're gonna say at, at the max, they're resting for two and a half minutes. So in this case, 
uh, if someone's doing a 30 second sprint to optimize this, the recovery of the system, allow the lactate to clear a little bit, allow ATP to reform before we go into another sprint, you're gonna give those athletes a minute and a half to two and a half minutes of rest. All right, let's think about the fast glycolysis system. So for this one, let's assume we're doing a two minute swim interval. So what that means is that we're doing a hard interval where we're in the pool going back and forth, say freestyle for two minutes hard. How much are we gonna give those athletes time to rest at the side of the pool? Because we don't want them resting so long that they're just kind of chatting and losing, losing focus, but we wanna give it enough that we're clearing the system out enough that we can, we can go back to another hard two minute effort. So in this case, we're gonna use a one to three to a one to four work to rest ratio. So with a two minute hard effort, we're gonna multiply that by three and that'll be six minutes of rest. Um, in, with this system, a lot of times oxidative work is used as rest. So it might just be something like a technique drill or a backstroke or, or an elementary backstroke or something that's really low intensity with, for six minutes and then back to that two minutes of hard effort. So that would be an example of that, that fast glycolysis slash oxidative system. All right, and then when we think about oxidative systems, these are gonna be for our cross country athletes, our triathletes, you know, any, anyone that's oxidative. So these are gonna be greater than three minute efforts. So let's think for example, we have a college cross country runner and that college cross, run, cross country runner is doing fartlek training or interval training or mile repeats or VO2 max type training. Um, so for example, maybe they're running a mile and then they're resting and then they're running a mile and then they're resting. And let's say these are you know, pretty good athletes. They're running five and a half, six minute mile repeats. Um, and that's gonna be a hard effort, but it's still gonna be that oxidative zone, that, that five, six minutes. So according to these work to rest ratios, we're gonna get, want to give them a one to one to a one to three rest ratio work to rest ratio there. So if they're working hard for five minutes, they're gonna rest for five minutes to 15 minutes. And again, in the case of something like fartlek training, that might be a high effort and then a, you know, a, a sustained, but less than like a sub threshold effort and working back and forth. So it might be that hard one mile and then it might be, you know, 800 meters of a walk or 800 meters of a fast walk or something like that. So that's again, optimizing the oxidative system. All right guys, just to overview here, the phosphagen system is gonna be the primary system that's gonna give us energy for efforts lasting less than 10 seconds. The fast glycolysis or anaerobic glycolysis system is gonna be giving us most of our energy for that 15 to 30 second efforts. If we're thinking about efforts that are lasting one to three minutes, that's where we're gonna get a combination of energy systems giving us that energy. So most of the ATP supplied to the muscles is gonna come from both oxidative and fast glycolysis in this system. Whereas for oxidative, if we're thinking about efforts lasting greater than three minutes, we're thinking about most of the energy coming from oxidative means, you know, like the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. And if you want more information about those, I'll link the videos in the bottom. All right, guys, I hope you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. It helps out so other people can find this video and learn from it. If you want more videos like this to learn about strength conditioning, go ahead and subscribe for more videos and click the link in the description below to join the Strength and Conditioning Study Group on Facebook. In the Strength and Conditioning Study Group, we go over practice questions for the CSCS and do Facebook Lives covering topics like this each week. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.